common claim I've heard from the anti-creationary community was again repeated in the comments section of my rants number 93 and 94. As I pointed out in that rant, evolution has life arising from non-life, in direct violation of well-established scientific and natural laws. Of course, the anti-creationists then turn around and try and pull a fast one, claiming that evolution does not attempt to explain the origin of life. It goes something like this. Supposedly, humans and apes branched off from an unknown common ancestor, an ape-like creature. This ape-like creature evolved from a missing mammal ancestor, which evolved from the missing amphibian ancestor, which evolved from the missing fish ancestor, which evolved from the missing vertebrate ancestor, which evolved from the missing invertebrate ancestor, which evolved from the missing single-celled ancestor, which evolved from... Warning, warning, attempted intrusion into the no-go zone. Wait a minute. Why did you stop there? Evolution has already lost the race if it didn't even get off the starting block. Evolution and the origin of life are intrinsically connected. At least, according to our school textbooks, they are. In McGraw-Hill's Understanding Biology, we find they discuss the Miller-Urey experiment. Now, of course, this is an attempt to explain how life could have evolved from non-life. In fact, on the previous page, when we flip over to there, we find that to them, the two are one and the same. Page 50.3, evolution. Life may have evolved from inanimate matter, with associations among molecules becoming more and more complex. In this view, the force leading to life was natural selection. In this high school textbook being used right here on Ontario, complete with the Ontario Ministry of Education seal of approval on it, we find in the evolution section, the Stanley Miller experiment, which of course is an attempt to explain the origin of life from non-life by natural processes. In fact, on the next page, we read the evolution of self-replicating molecular systems and cell-like structures is a vital area of investigation among scientists who study the origin of life. Glencoe's The Biology, The Dynamics of Life also made the connection between the origin of life and evolution in no uncertain terms. First, by showing the Miller-Urey experiment and stating, the first forms of life may have been prokaryotes that evolved from a protocell. In other words, non-living material. In the evolution section of this California high school biology textbook, we find a section called The Origin of Life, complete with the Miller-Urey experiment. At the very least, it's hypocritical to teach us in the schools that evolution explains the origin of life. Then, when we creationists call you on it, you try and pull a fast one and tell us that no evolution does not attempt to explain the origin of life. In fact, these claims become even more suspicious when you take a look at the claims of evolution as a whole. For example, if you head on over to the NASA website and check out their typical definition of cosmic evolution, we read, Cosmic evolution provides the proper universal context for biological evolution, revealing that the latter is only a small part of the bigger picture, in which everything is evolving, including life and culture. In fact, speaking of beautiful pictures, the Harvard website has a beautiful website portraying pictures and videos of cosmic evolution from the Big Bang right through to our future. Brock Lee actually speculated that the reasons the evolutionists portray evolution in this way is to bolster the appearance of plausibility. If they can convince you that a planet can evolve by natural processes, then it sounds more believable that life could have evolved by natural processes. So now, right smack dab in the middle of this long, beautiful myth of evolution, you want to now remove an entire chapter in the middle of the book? You wish to claim that evolution does not explain the origin of life? I'm sorry, that is disingenuous, hypocritical, and I would dare say even deceitful. As you saw for yourself, the origin of life is a crucial chapter in the evolution myth. But life cannot arise from non-life, that's a scientific fact. Therefore, because evolution has life arising from non-life, in direct violation of well-established scientific and natural laws, then 
That means evolution is neither scientific nor natural. By definition of the word, evolution is a supernatural process. If you're so quick to embrace the supernatural, then why are you so quick to reject the author of the supernatural, the Lord Jesus Christ, who supernaturally rose from the dead to show us that he is the way, the truth, and the life? Why would you be so quick to reject eternal life? May I suggest to you today, you call upon Jesus to rescue you from your sins and to save your soul and give you eternal life.